Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan. Woo! And in this video, we are gonna explain how atoms form ionic bonds and construct electron dot formulas to illustrate those ionic bonds. As always, let's take a quick moment to break it down. First thing we are going to do, explain how ionic bonds form ionic compounds using Lewis Valens electron dot structures. Numero do. We're gonna use Coulomb's law, bringing it back, to predict the relative strength of an ionic bond. And then lastly, we're gonna discuss the characteristics of ionic bonding. Bonding, bonding, bonding. Up until this point, we've really been talking about atoms as they exist as elements or by themselves. In this video, we're gonna to start to talk about what happens as those atoms come together and form bonds. We are gonna come together. We're gonna come together now. We are gonna run together. We're gonna turn it upside down. And as you take a look at your screen, essentially what is happening right there is the illustration of an ionic bond. I am so excited to learn more about this animation. Okay, so first, what the heck is a chemical bond? It is just a mutual electrical attraction between the positive charges in the nucleus and the negative charges in the valence level of different atoms that binds the atoms together. And it's important to note that these bonds tend to form so that each atom, by gaining, losing, or sharing electrons, has an octet of electrons in its valence level. And it turns out that that resulting arrangement of having a complete valence level reduces the overall potential energy of the system. And I think we can both agree that using less energy is a good thing. I like to use as little energy as possible. So as you take a look at the thrilling animation that is going to repeat itself on your screen, we're gonna start off with a neutral atom of sodium and a neutral atom of chlorine. We put some energy in to remove the electron from the sodium atom. Some energy is released when that electron is gained by the chlorine atom. And then overall, the energy of the system is reduced when they come together to form that bond. Now, there are several different types of bonds. In this video, we're gonna focus on ionic bonding which is the electrical attraction that occurs between oppositely charged ions. Okay, so as you take a look at your screen, you've got an animation that's gonna repeat over and over that sort of gives you a general overview of what's happening in an ionic bond. Essentially, you have two neutral atoms that form ions, and then those oppositely charged ions form a bond. Now, a couple of important vocabulary words before we move forward. Recognize that an atom that loses an electron to form a positive ion is called a cation. And it's generally your metals that typically lose electrons. And as you think about why, and going back to the CBR periodic table, Recall that your metals will typically lose their valence electrons because they have relatively low or unattractive core charges. So as I come back to this animation, recognize that it's the sodium atom, the metal, that is losing the electron to form the positive ion or cation. A second important vocabulary word, anion. These are atoms that gain electrons to form negative ions, and typically it's your nonmetals that will gain electrons. Again, as you come back to the CVR model of the periodic table, recognize that your nonmetals will generally gain electrons because they have relatively high or attractive effective core charges. So as I come back to this animation, recognize here that it's the chlorine atom or the non-metal that's gaining the electrons to form the anion or negatively charged ion after it has gained an electron. It's also important to recognize that ionic bonds can form between both monatomic and polyatomic ions. So not only when individual elements gain or lose electrons, like what we're observing here in this animation between sodium and chlorine, but ionic bonds can also form between those polyatomic ions, for example, between ammonium and nitrate. And hopefully at this point, you're a little bit familiar with some of those polyatomic ions. Now, super important to recognize that the ions in ionic compounds exist in a ratio so that the overall charge of a compound is neutral. And for ionic compounds, we say that a formula unit represents the smallest ratio of ions that give us an overall 
all neutral charge. So as you take a look at the crystal lattice that represents a crystal of sodium chloride, a common ionic compound, notice that my formula unit would include one sodium ion and one chloride ion because the sodium ion has a charge of plus one and the chloride ion has a charge of minus one. And one of each of them gives me the smallest ratio of ions with an overall neutral charge. Now, a big part of what you have to do with ionic bonding is represent those bonds using Lewis valence dot symbols. And we can use these Lewis valence dot symbols to represent the movement of electrons from metal atoms to nonmetal atoms, resulting in ions that are attracted to each other and therefore bond. So as you take a look at your notes, you are given an example of a Lewis dot structure that illustrates the ionic bond between potassium and chlorine. Potassium is your metal, it will lose its single valence electron. Chlorine is gonna gain that one electron from potassium. In so doing, they each get a complete valence level, but they form ions in the process. Potassium will form a positively charged ion, chlorine will form a negatively charged ion. And the attraction that results between those oppositely charged ions is your ionic bond. Note that many times we include brackets around our negatively charged ions to help indicate that it is in fact the ion. Also important, include those charges to let us know how many electrons have been gained or lost. Here's another thrilling example. Take a moment, pause the video, check it out, see what's happening here. We've got an atom of magnesium and two atoms of fluorine. In this case, that one atom of magnesium is gonna lose both of its valence electrons, one to each of the atoms of fluorine. Your magnesium ion forms a charge of two plus, and each fluorine atom forms an ion of one minus. As you think about why the ratio here is one to one, and why the ratio here is one to two, again, keep in mind that our goal is to form compounds with an overall neutral charge. Now, an important note about ions as they come together to form ionic compounds. They're gonna arrange themselves in such a fashion to reduce their overall potential energy. And this arrangement for ionic compounds is described as a crystal lattice. Boom, crystal lattice. And essentially, it's this arrangement in the crystal lattice that maximizes the electrostatic attraction for the cations for all the surrounding anions leading to the most stable, lowest energy arrangement. It's important to note that electrostatic attraction is non-directional and therefore there is no direct anion-cation pair. Therefore, we don't have a molecule like we would see in some covalent compounds, but we describe it instead as a formula unit. Boom! Again, as you look at this crystal lattice, recognize that each of those positive ions are equally attracted to all the negative ions that surround it. And since we don't have discrete molecules on ionic compounds, we just identify the smallest ratio of ions to give us an overall neutral charge and say that that is our formula unit. Okay, we're gonna throw back here to one of my all-time favorite laws, and that's Coulomb's Law. We can use Coulomb's Law to help us predict the relative strengths of the resulting ionic bonds. So remember that the force or energy of attraction between charged particles is inversely proportional to the distance between those charges. In other words, as the distance decreases, the energy increases. Inversely proportional. So what does that mean? Larger ions mean the center of that positive charge or the nucleus of your cation is further away from the negative charge or the electrons in your anion. So take a look at this great image in your notes with corresponding lattice energies. Now don't get thrown off by the negative signs in front of those lattice energies. Those values simply indicate the energy released as gaseous ions come together to form the solid crystal lattice. As you take a look at those examples, notice that each ionic compound is made up of a cation that has a positive one charge and an anion that has a negative one charge. Notice that the closer that those ions get to one another, the greater the lattice energy and therefore stronger the ionic bond between those ions. Also keep in mind that the force or energy of attraction between oppositely charged particles is directly proportional to the product of the charges. So as those as the magnitude of those charges gets larger, the energy of attraction also will increase. So the greater the charge means those ions are more strongly attracted. Again, check out that image that's in your notes and on your screen. This time, recognize that the distance between the ions in these two compounds is approximately the same. However, notice that the lattice energy is far greater in the compound that forms between calcium and oxide, and it comes back to the larger charges in calcium and oxide than we see in sodium and fluoride. Coulomb's law. And important to note of the two factors, charge and distance, 
it's usually ion charge that's generally more important when determining relative strength of an ionic bond. Okay, and then lastly, let's take a couple of quick moments just to identify some common characteristics of ionic compounds. First, we need to recognize that ionic compounds have high melting points and high boiling points. Remember, the bonding in that crystal lattice is non-directional, so those ions are equally attracted to all of the surrounding ions. And so they're held really tightly together. So it takes a lot of energy to overcome those attractions to change them into the liquid or the gas phase. Also important to recognize that ionic compounds are hard and very brittle. Again, if you think about hammering an ionic lattice, a bunch of charges are gonna shift past one another and lining up those like charges is gonna cause the ionic crystal to shatter. And lastly, even though the ionic compound overall has a neutral charge, you need to remember that it's made up of ions or charged particles. So when you dissolve an ionic compound to make an aqueous solution, many ionic compounds will conduct electrical current. And as you take a look at your notes, you've got an example there of how once dissolved in solution, those ions or charges are free to move and conduct electrical current. Whew. All right, one last thriller of a animation to illustrate the general idea of ionic bonding. Can't stop watching it. And that brings us to an end for this video. Have a fantastic day. We are gonna come together.